Hey kids, it's the best and fly here, yeah, hope you're well. Now welcome to the British summertime, it's uh, the middle of July, height of summer, and it's a grey, dreary, old, damp day once again, but there you go, that's uh, blighty for you. But uh, the good news is, I'm out on another bike review, and this is a bike that lots of people have asked me if I was going to ride, and I've been trying to ride it for some time. This is the uh, Tracer 900. Now I've ridden the MT-09 before, so it's going to be interesting to see how this compares. So stick around, stay tuned for the next few minutes, and I'll give you my first impressions review of the Yamaha Tracer 900. So just while I'm in amongst this traffic and on this slow bit of road, I might as well uh, just go through some of the sort of backstory of this bike. Uh, if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, there was a while in about, uh, well, just prior to 2014, I suppose, when Yamaha were somewhat in the doldrums and weren't uh, doing much as far as the new bikes were concerned. I went to the NEC show in, I think it was 2014, and Yamaha showed this new triple engine. Uh, in this weird sort of wire structure and said don't worry we're going to be back you know they kind of admitted they had very few new bikes and uh, but they showed this triple engine and uh, they then used that in the MT-09 which was a massive success and I rode that one recently a great bike sort of naked hooligan bike and this bike the Tracer 900 is kind of derived from that it's got the same triple engine it has that very familiar triple wine which I love uh, and uses that very same engine that I saw at the NEC show but uh, what they've done is uh, changed some elements of the bike things like the suspension the subframe have been changed and of course the bodywork to make it into a sort of a, an all-rounder now, all-rounders, you know, sometimes get a bad rap, don't they, because people think that they're just boring and not very exciting, but uh, I have a feeling, even in the very short time I've already ridden this, that this isn't going to be the case with the Tracer 900. I've ridden lots of all-rounders, I, I own an all-rounder myself, you could say, in my BMW GS I regard as an all-rounder, so I'm quite familiar with the genre. This one has no off-road pretensions, it's very much a sort of sport tourer bike. Um, but again, it's the sort of bike that if you only had one bike, then this sort of covers all the bases. So let's see uh, how well it does in, on things like, uh, you know, weather protection, what it's like in the twist, is what it's like comfort-wise and so on. It's amazing, isn't it? Once you've ridden a few motorcycles, you very quickly uh, get a feel for uh, whether you like a bike or not. And this is one of those bikes that you jump onto and you instantly, well, I certainly do, I instantly feel that this is a bike I'm going to love. The engine feels eager, you've got a fantastic riding position, big old wide handlebars, really comfortable. The seat is a little bit hard, but it's a comfortable riding position. Your feet are quite far back, you know, behind your knees, uh, but they're not particularly tucked up. It's not a hugely sportly position, but at the same time, you're not like you're sitting on an armchair or something like that. Uh, but the bike feels insanely light, which is lovely, uh, and the engine eager. So, first of all, if you were just plonked on it, you'd never, other than the riding position, you'd never say that this was an all-rounder. You'd say that this was a sort of a, a sporty naked. It just feels almost super moto-ish. It's so light and flickable. It's a lovely bike to ride. From a practical point of view, things like the mirrors, which are on these very short looking stalks actually, but they work pretty well. There's no vibration, uh, they're a bit of an odd shape, but they've got a perfectly good view, so the mirrors work really well. The brakes are something that, I, that struck me immediately, really good brakes, so I'm looking forward to checking what they are on the front here. I assume they're just Yamaha um, calipers, but I'm going to have a look because they feel really sharp on the front in particular, which is nice. Uh, and just the way the layout looks, I actually prefer this layout, I think, to uh, the MT-09. The MT-09 has the little offset dash, if you remember, which is quite quirky, and I quite like, but this has got the dash from the uh, Super Tenere, so it's laden with uh, information on here. It's got the, you know, your usual riding stuff on the left, your speed, your rev count, your fuel gauge, which I'm glad to see, and so on, and what your mode, your in traction control setting. And on the right, you've got an information page with all the usual stuff, trip counters, range, and all that kind of thing and uh, you cycle through them using the controls on the left hand bar here so this uh, this button at the top is kind of a selection button and then the button that you would normally think is the headlight flasher actually gets you into the menus right let's turn uh, up this road up here let's see get a bit more of a feel for the handling on the bike man these brakes are just prodigious now I'm a, I'm a fan of triple engines of course coming from my street triple and this thing sounds exactly the same. Bit of a kamikaze pigeon there. Wow, this bike really has some punch. It's amazing. I mean, it immediately feels much quicker than my street triple, which I didn't think I'd be saying about a, an all-rounder bike. But the thing just flies. brakes, as I say, are superb, and it's as flickable as you like. Now this bike actually won the MCN 
uh, all-rounder bike of the year, I think. I think for two years running, I think 2015 and 16. I may be wrong on that, but uh, I can see why they liked it so much. Yeah, it's very much leaning, I would say, to the sport side of the uh, sport touring equation. Brilliant fun. So the suspension feels quite firm. And I guess that's uh, partly why the handling is so good. It's not so firm that it rattles your fillings or is uh, unpleasant, but it uh, certainly wouldn't be described as a wallowy bike or anything like that, so it keeps the handling nice and crisp. In terms of uh, weather protection, this is a bike that's intended to do long distances, what with the fairing and the screen and so on. Uh, it seems, so far, to work quite well actually, slightly better than I would think because it's a very angular looking sort of transformerish looking kind of bike. It's not all smooth fairing, it's got bits kind of bolted on. Uh, and it seems to do a reasonable job. These massive hand guards uh, actually look a bit weird from here, but they do a pretty good job of keeping the wind off your hands, which is nice. The screen is adjustable, a bit manually and a little bit fiddly. Uh, it's kind of a, it's not got a different settings. It's, it slides. There are a couple of uh, bolts down here underneath the LCD dash that you undo a little bit, and then you can slide it up and down. So it's high setting at the moment, and I'm not feeling any. Um, turbulent air coming off the top. It seems quite smooth, which is quite nice. I'm five foot eight, so relatively short fella. Uh, and for me, the screen seems to be doing a good job, which is unusual. Um, mostly I find that, uh, you know, often with bikes with screens, you get a bit of turbulence off the top. But uh, this actually feels okay, surprisingly, because it looks quite small, but it works okay. I can't get over how flickable this bike feels. It feels just so lightweight. For a bike that also doesn't feel small, you know, it feels quite a big sort of adventure type bike. But man, it just doesn't have the weight there. Which is a real treat. It certainly sounds amazing. And goes amazing. Now this bike is treated to a fair old electronics package, package actually. Let's not go too nuts just yet. <laughs> too much fun. So this bike has, uh, I think, three levels of traction control that you can adjust uh, on the fly. And it's got three riding modes as well. I'm in standard at the moment, but it also has an A and B mode. A is basically the most aggressive throttle setting, and B, uh, the opposite. Sort of a rain mode, you can think of that as. Here we go, an unrestricted zone. I'm in fifth, but she still pulls away nicely. Yeah, I think you could do some big bars on this bike. I think things like motorways would be no problem at all, because it's got plenty of go, and you've got that uh, wind protection. You could have fun riding across the continent, and then when you get to the Alps, you can absolutely carve them up, because of this lightweight flickability I've been going on about. Now this bike sits in the company of things like the uh, Suzuki V-Strom, the Kawasaki Versus, uh, that sort of company I suppose, in sort of budget all-rounder class, uh, and they're all sub 10k bikes, but I have to say, well I've not ridden the Kawasaki, but I've ridden the Suzuki, which I really like, the V-Strom, both the 650 and the 1000, but this thing is in another league. It certainly doesn't feel like a budget bike. Right, what I need to do is find a spot somewhere that I can uh, show you the bike and talk you through the spec. I've sort of ridden around randomly, didn't really have a plan of where I was going on the bike and uh, I've ended up a spot that I know luckily, there's a little uh, turn up here on the left, which uh, if you're a horror fan uh, and remember the 1980s, this used to be the headquarters of the Hammer House of Horror Films down here. I think it's called Hamden House, I might be wrong on that, but uh, I'll stop up here and show you the bike. So yeah, just down that pathway there was where a lot of those Hammer House of Horror films were made. Just as a passing bit of information. Right then, let's uh, stick her here then and show you the bike. Nice that it's got a gear indicator. Massive 
uh, lep on the stand so that you can you know you can actually get the thing down easy keys in a bit of an odd place it's offset and quite deep down there but not a problem just an observation and one of the nice things about this bike is it comes as standard with a center stand uh, why don't all bikes of this type come with that often they're an extra but uh, yeah it's standard on this one okay so here she is the uh, mt09 derived yamaha tracer let me get uh, the phone out and i'll get a better shot of her and i'll talk you through the specs Right, hopefully that's uh, in focus for you. Okay, so uh, here we are then, as I say, Yamaha Tracer 900. I rode the 700 a while back, and I have to say this is a much more exciting bike for me. It looks, uh, I guess, divide opinion a little bit, because it's got this sort of waspish front end, transformerish I described it as earlier. I actually think it looks pretty good, and I like what they've done with the plastics here. They, I mean, they are plastics, but they've uh, come up with this sort of finish that makes it look sort of carbon fibery on various bits of the bike, on the intakes there and so on. And I think it looks really good, and it's got the usual uh, excellent Yamaha fit and finish. Uh, as far as the specs are concerned, as I mentioned, it's a triple engine, triple cylinder, it's 847cc, uh, uh, and it puts out 115 PS at 10,000 RPM, so quite high revving, 87.5 Newton meters of torque at 8,500 RPM. In terms of those brakes, which I said worked really well, uh, they do look like the Yamaha calipers, here we are, twin discs at the front, 298 millimeter dual discs at the front. Uh, and the suspension there, 137 millimetres of uh, travel on those front forks. Seat height is uh, 845 millimetres. It is adjustable. I've got it on the high setting at the moment, which actually, let me just open my visor, actually works um, fine for me, and I'm not a tall guy particularly. Uh, but it is a relatively tall bike, but it's nice and narrow, so I've got no problem getting my feet down, even on the high setting. Uh, weight, wet, is 210 kilograms. So as a wet weight, that makes it a very light bike indeed in this sort of class, in this sort of, um, well it's not an adventure bike but all rounder if you like, sport touring type bike, uh, excellent weight, tank is pretty large actually, 18 litres, so we get a good range out of it, uh, according to the website, uh, in excess of 185 miles out of a tank full of fuel, uh, I mentioned it's got traction control, three mode traction control, uh, selectable riding modes, ABS of course, and just quickly show you the switch gear here, uh, the usual start stop stuff on that side. Uh, and also the mode button, uh, which is this at the bottom here, which you can change on the fly, just uh, you know, put it to idle, bring the clutch in, switch it. Uh, and then on this side, uh, we've got the switch gear at the top, which selects the various um, items in the information menu, as I mentioned before. Then you've got those stubby little mirrors that work really well. Fit and finish as usual, Yamaha, brilliant. I mean, just, I mean, just the fuel cap is just nicely done the way they've got the uh it's not knurled but whatever that finishes on the edge there just looks really lovely particularly for a bike that is you know a budget bike price wise while we're talking about that eight thousand eight hundred and ninety nine on the road so less than nine grand that is a lot of bike for the money oh the sun's coming out excellent and then there are other bits and pieces it's got an assist and slipper clutch as i mentioned the center stand is fitted as standard which is a nice thing uh, it's got this dinky little exhaust which i think looks quite smart you can get um, aftermarket exhaust though there are loads of accessories on the yamaha website for this from top boxes to different rates suspension springs and all sorts of things there's an optional quick shifter for it as well uh, which i think would be great on this uh, on this particular machine uh, and there we have it yeah so that's it that's uh, pretty much all i've got to say uh, about the spec, I think I've covered everything. Really nice, I think it looks good. That uh, seat, nice and big on the back if you want to take a pillion. Very much a practical touring bike as well as a fun machine. Okay, enough yapping. Let me jump back on the machine and uh, do some more riding. Okie dokie then, let's get this show back on the road. Bizarre the way that key's down there. <laughs> you have to sort of dig for it a bit. Just sounds spiffing. Okay, nothing coming. Now in my uh, exuberance at riding this bike, I've ridden out here and I don't really know how I'm going to get back. Uh, think about this. What would be good is uh, to try the bike out in a little bit of a more urban environment. So let me go and find some town. So just while I'm on the uh, search for some to ride the bike through and see how she copes in the more urban environment. Uh, just must take this opportunity to thank the guys up at Power Biking in High Wycombe, which is the Yamaha dealer for High Wycombe and the surrounding areas. Uh, Sam's the chap to see there if you want to ride on any of their bikes. Top fella, more enthusiastic fella about motorcycles 
you'll be hard pressed to find. A great showroom there as well as uh, loads of bikes, have got loads of accessories so uh, check them out if you're in the High Wycombe area. And uh, thanks to those guys once again for letting me borrow one of their bikes for this review. Yeah, I think it's kind of unfair describing the uh, Tracer 900 as an all-rounder because to me it's a really fun bike. It's more of a fun bike that happens to be practical. One thing about the uh, Tracer 900 that's very different from its MT-09 brother is it's uh, the way it feels size-wise. I don't know if it's because it's got this big old fuel tank which is actually quite wide between the knees although the bike is uh, narrow at the waist you can get your legs down on the deck easy uh, it feels like your knees are relatively splayed out because of this wide old tank it makes the bike feel physically quite large it feels much more well not decrying the MT-09 but it feels a much more serious bike than the MT-09 which felt very light and toy and bicycle like this one just feels much more serious machine it's still got all the lightness and flickability but the dimensions of it feel bigger it almost kind of defies physics that because it feels like a big bike but it rides like a small one work out how they've managed to do that so just coming into town now and uh, one of the nice things about this bike is that the clutch is, has got very light action so if you're in stop start traffic it's actually you know it's pretty easy on the old hands and with this really tall riding position you're quite lofty up here and you can see what's uh, developing up ahead even when you've got trucks and stuff in front of you so actually a, a pretty good bike I would think for the commute even though it uh, feels quite wide I think you'd be fine in town you can sort of muscle it around and you've got a good view the gearbox on this is nice and slick as well and as I mentioned they do do an optional quick shifter I believe and uh, I think that would be a, a fun addition even on a bike like this I'm really surprised, you know, I'm I'm liking this bike more than the MT-09 to ride. I, I mean, the MT-09 I expected to be an naked funster, and it was. But this, I think, is even nicer to ride. How annoying that truck's going the way I wanted to go. Let's give you a bit of a clean, just in case. So that's pretty much it for my first impressions uh, review of the uh, Yamaha MT-09 Tracer and uh, I have been surprised by the bike I expected I'd probably like it but I've really liked it a lot more than I thought I would and I can entirely see why it won the awards when it came out a couple of years ago for being the best all-rounder and I think compared to the other bikes that I've ridden in this sort of category this is by far and away a nicer bike to ride if you like the looks of the thing then you're gonna absolutely love the way the thing rides it is a beautiful bike it's uh, handles really well the engine is fantastic it sounds great and it goes really fast the mirrors work well the brakes are just stonking for just Yamaha standard brakes they work really well I like the display it's very practical you can see everything on there it's got a fuel gauge which is great a, a gear position indicator which is a nice addition um, I like the fact the bike comes with a standard um, center stand a very practical addition the wind protection with this screen and with this massive fuel tank seem to work really well you know as standard which is unusual for bikes I find uh, it has got a big old fuel tank so it's practical as well for distance it's got a big pillion seat so you can take a passenger on it no problem at all as an all-rounder it absolutely ticks all the boxes and as a fun bike it ticks all the boxes as well it may not look like it's going to be a fun bike but believe me uh, if you've not ridden one give one a go it's an absolute hoot of a bike I've really enjoyed it so uh, if you're in the market with this sort of machine do give the MT-09 uh, Tracer a go I think you're going to love it I really have so thanks again to uh, the guys at Power Biking for making the review possible and uh, I look forward to speaking to you again next time until then this has been the Missenden Flyer cheerio aha I found something about the bike that I don't like I hate doing reviews where it's all too good to be true <laughs> just caught a reflection of myself in a car when I was in some traffic and I noticed that Yamaha have done that thing with this where the lights uh, you've only got one of the lights on which really annoys me why don't they put both on I've never had a good explanation as to why that is I've heard some uh, stories about it being safety related because uh, it's hard for car drivers if they just see if they see two lights they think it's a car in the distance and not a motorcycle and if they see one they assume it's a motorcycle but that just sounds a bit a bit rubbish but that's the best explanation I've heard but I wish uh, manufacturers wouldn't do that because they just look like the, the headlights are broken when one is on so that's, that's something I don't like about the bike it's got the single headlight on when you're just running the bike normally